Hi everyone. Uh, I thought I'd um, show you uh, a little bit about watercolor because, um, well, just because a lot of people who do acrylics do also watercolor. So what I showed you last, that was this bit here. Um, this is the Vallejo, the watercolor, this stuff, liquid watercolor. And I bought a couple of new colors, that's this. It's very, very intense. I really like the colors. And I'm going to show you the difference between um, different sorts of watercolor. So I cut up a few um, pieces of watercolor paper. What I use is, um, this is also from Canson. And I always use the same uh, paper. This is uh, Canson Montval. And as you can see here, it's 300 grams the square meter, or 140 pounds. Um, it's an A3 size, and this was a mega pack, 100 sheets. And it, um, I think it's more um, economical to buy a big block if you do a lot of watercolors, because um, it's much, much cheaper. And a lot of times they have them, uh, you know, with uh, what you guys have, the coupon codes, and we have, um, we call it something else, but then you get a really nice discount. So what I'm going to show you is a couple of things. First off, in here I have um, a sea, sea salt. I um, put some water uh, on the stove, boiled it put sea salt in it and then you just stir until the uh, sea salt sort of gets um, you know in the uh, in the water and I'll show you the difference in a bit now what you can buy is this you have these little um, plastic things they call naps and you can get half a nap or a full nap these are all half naps and they can be pretty expensive because this little set here is um, as you can see it's really old but this little set was uh, something like 150 euros but if I tell you that I've been using this for the last 30 years yep you heard that right I've been using this for 30 years and I've done a lot of um, watercolors so you know sometimes you just have to uh, spend a little but you get good quality and um, it, it really goes a long way. And what you're looking for is the artist uh, quality, not the uh, studio quality in, uh, in watercolor. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what this is, if it's artist quality or not. doesn't say on the... Uh, on the uh, it does say that you have to shake it, but other than that, it doesn't say how, how pigmented it is. But this is the, the real deal. This is what every artist um, uses when they sell their art. So what I'd like to show you is just normal water. And we'll take a nice deep color so you can see what, what it does. Let's see. This is Payne's Gray. And I think this one, this one is better. Yeah, this is a really dark blue. So I'm loading up my uh, brush, as you can see, rolling it in loading it up and I will first off start with normal water and what you want to do when you do watercolors you have to f fresh your water often because you want to play with really nice and fresh water that's the best thing so what I'll do is I'll Put, let's see if you can see it. Yes, you can. I'm putting a little bit of normal tap water on the page, just like that, making it a little bit moist. Then loading up the brush again, because when you put water in one of those naps, it takes a while for it to take. Now, when I put it on the paper, you see a really little, see that? And this is just tap water, right? There it is. 
Now, now I'm going to take a clean brush and I'm going to take my salt water and put that on the page and with the clean brush I'm going to take up again some paint and can you see how it's spreading? See that? That's what salt water does. It spreads the uh, paint all over the place. So you get a much, much, much better spread of the colors. That's that. Cleaning off the brush again. And that, it, that you see this feathering here? That's because the paper is wet and here I went further than what was wet so here I'm touching dry paper so that's how you can um, sort of buffer where that paint goes see if I were to do this here just one nice stroke you'll see that it won't go any further than that because this is dry so if you want these beautiful fluffy effects all you have to do is make it all wet like that then load up your brush and put it along there. Make sure you get a lot of pigment on there. And you will see that it slowly, it's gonna move out into this wet piece of paper. Now, I'd like to uh, get the same color of Vallejo, a really dark blue. Let me find it for you guys. That's blue. That's slate blue. Navy blue. Now, down here, I'm going to... This is the normal tap water. And I'm going to put some of that on a little palette here. Look at it. Can you see it go? And can you see how pigmented this is? This is very, very pigmented. That is beautiful. I am, I'm really, really turned on with these uh, pigments. As you can see how it feathers out, it does such different stuff. Now I have to clean my water again. What I usually do is I take um, a little cup for uh, my brush and then have a, um, a little uh, sort of a um, bucket next to me where I throw in the dirty water and then just fill the cup with clean water again. Now, now I have my brush clean. I'm going to put it in with the salt water and I'm going to do the same thing. But now this side, oh, see how that goes? That's uh, now I've got it contaminated. Wait a minute, clean it off, load it up again. So this is salt water. Now I'm loading it up with the Vallejo. See it? See it move? And I would say um, the Vallejo sort of acts as if there's something already in it because I'm not seeing much of a difference between the salt water and the tap water where if you look at the normal uh, um, watercolor you see a difference. I like that though, I really do. So, cleaning off the brush again. Now, if we were to make this wet, and I'm gonna touch, very slightly touch the uh, blue. Can you see how it's starting to feather from the other side too? Now I'm gonna do the same thing to these.
this side is okay but as you can see that side is not not really working so you can use this to your advantage because if you like that the, the paint pulls then you should just go for the Vallejo if you want something like this those nice and tight tight lines then you go for the naps and of course we have let me see if I have the same color yes I do this one is Royal Talons and these are really really old and you have to wet them too because you know after a while they're pretty pretty much dried up even in the tube and it is another color but you can see how it works but with this what you see here these are the naps this is the uh, tube and I'll put a little bit more color on the uh, brush this is superior to this because I can see and so can you if you really um, look at it closely you can see how unbelievably pigmented this uh, this stuff is let me get you really up close there it is it is so pigmented it's beautiful I really really like it and that's what you can um, that's what you can play with now I know someone said you know it's sort of the same as um, Ecoline this is Ecoline and if you put down with the normal tap water we'll put some down here and then I'll show you the Ecoline see that it's nice too absolutely but what I don't like about the eco line is that the pigments for me they're they you can't you can't put them side by side because this one fades out especially when it's dry you'll see that this one really fades out and um, I can show you Where you can see that the pink and the, the orange and the green here that's all Vallejo and this is a little bit of Ecoline and you can see that it really fades out so that's the difference between um, how pigmented something is and how something turns out that is less pigmented now if you take it one step further and this is where it, it gets really fun what you can also do is if you have the um, and a lot of you do have the uh, pigments from Leslie the primary elements this is primary elements and what I'm doing is I'm wetting what's in the cup here just making it a little wet because it's been drying for a couple of weeks and as you can see lovely colors but what we also have is a bunch of sparkles there it is and now I'll do the other one and now you're probably thinking well how can you in how can you do that because that's just pigments and that is true it is but <laughs> here comes the big butt see here you go look at that you can even push them in together and make a gradual ombre kind of a thing see that how they push in together how beautiful they work now how do you get that stuff on the paper you might ask yes that's a good question because just making um, the primary elements wet and putting them on the paper sure it'll work but once it's dry it'll fall off the paper because there's no binders in the pigments so what you can buy is something like this and it's called a binding me medium for a watercolor and as you can see here's the brand it's Senelier and I know there are a couple of other brands and what it really is is rabbit gum and it's not that expensive and, and this goes a long long way I'll show you 
See that? It's just gooey, gooey stuff. And what you do is you put some in a little cup, you add your pigments, your primary elements, and when you've done that, you mix it all together and you make watercolor. And it dries up like it was in the cup, all dry. And then all you have to do is wet the, uh, the, the stuff you made and you can paint with it, see? And too bad you can't really pick up the uh, the sparkles. Let me see if I can show them to you that it's really sparkly. And if you can see that it's wet, but it, it also really sparkles. It does, believe me. So that's another thing that you can do with the uh, primary elements. And I'm pretty sure if you went and um, really did something cool with it, some sort of a uh, abstract, I'm pretty sure you can make something that looks amazing. As you can see, just load up your brush and the sparkles, it's sparkling like crazy, but you guys can't see that too bad, really. They should get something that I could show you the sparkles. And the good thing is that it's um, all the colors, they mix and match, so you can make your own beautiful colors. And the only thing that you have to watch out for is when you put your brush in the water, that it will, all the micas will um, float in the water. But this stuff is so loaded with micas that there's no problem doing that. I just wish I could show you how it, yeah, you can pick it up a little bit, but it is really beautiful. And because they're all light fast, of course you'd have to um, spray some, um, some sort of a varnish on top, but you have to do that with watercolor too, so then you spray some varnish on top with some UV protection and you're good to go. Um, lovely vibrant colors and um, of course, you can mix and match with other uh, watercolors. I'm pretty sure you can do that because usually this all mixes and matches. I can even see now the uh, the mica sort of coming to the top in here. That is cool. See how it just so dissolves in, into each other? And we could go over here, take it a little bit more, just rub it. See how it darkens? Because it's sort of mixing together. And there's some really beautiful things you could do with that. Now we can take another really bright color just to show you guys, you know, how that stuff works. I'm looking for my really bright pink. Oh, there it is. I do have it a little bit contaminated now, the water, because I've been using it for quite a long time. But you get the idea. You can do a lot of stuff with this. Now, I want to go back to this one, make it wet again. See that? Now you can come back and play some more with the color where you don't like uh, what it did or something like that. You can do that with the uh, Ecoline too, as you can see. But just, it just does not dissolve as much as this one does. Because we had here the tight line, you can see no line. And here, you can still see the line where I went over it, see that? The line doesn't really disappear. And with this one, the Vallejo watercolor, it does. And that's what I like about it, because if you're doing an abstract or something like that, you can come back later when this is dry and you can come in with a new color and you can just totally, totally do something different to it and make the colors really match. See, there we go, putting it right over there. And I just love the vibrancy. The vibrancy is something else. And I know that Vallejo is 
about all about color and about vibrancy. Um, the second thing that is very high um, on their uh, co the company really really makes sure that it's all um, environmentally friendly. There's no toxic stuff in here. There's nothing that you have to be afraid of. Um, if you go to their website, you will find um, the, how do you call that, the, uh, the fact sheets. And it's all been done. The reach, I don't know if you guys know reach, but it's very important for um, a company to um, put their products in, in one of those laboratories and they test it to death. They really do. They test it all over the place and with everything. And, you know, if it gets a, a certification, um, then you're good to go. Then you can really, you really know that you're, you're on to good stuff. So that's that. What I might like a little yellow just to show how it works. See how you can still keep playing in it. And it'll just go and beautiful, beautiful colors. I'm sure a lot of people who do journaling would really appreciate this. Uh, right now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 colors. Ooh, 13. I don't like to have 13 colors. But as you can see, the most amazing colors. It's really beautiful. And if I show you the other where I just tested the uh, new colors I uh, got, look at that. And I even put drops on, on top of uh, the older ones just to see how that works. And I like, I just love those rings that, that it does. And not all watercolors do that, so I was really, really, uh, really pleased with how it did that. I just love that. So I might be doing a big abstract watercolor pretty soon. Because look at that. That's like a screensaver. Huh. That'd be really cool. Something like this. Putting it up a little closer. How beautiful is that? Okay, guys. Well, today no uh, acrylic pour for me, but tomorrow I'll be back and uh, I'll be doing a, a really pretty acrylic pour. And um, tomorrow my paint's coming in from Vallejo. They promised me it would be delivered tomorrow afternoon. And if you're in Australia, um, please go to the paint lab because they have their, they got their paint a week early. That's pretty cool. So they are stocked up on Vallejo fluids. So, and they have all the mediums. They have everything on their website. So go uh, visit them and see what cool colors they have. And, um, you know, don't hurt your credit card too much. <laughs> Someone said... They went over there and it really hurt. So I'm, uh, I'm guessing they're sort of like me. You know, you plan to buy like eight or ten colors and you come home with 24. Yeah, well, I just think, well, I won't buy a pair of shoes this month. I'll just buy paint. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, that's the artists. They just don't care. As long as they have paints to play with, they think everything's cool, right? Okay, guys, so I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, I want to say have a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday evening, if you still have an evening. Most of you do. Uh, here it is, 10 past 5 in the afternoon. I'll be putting this up on YouTube, answering a few questions, and I'm going to be some do some relaxing on the couch with my little doggy and my hubby. And, um, oh yeah, and I want to say I started the series Outlander. Yeah, I started I, I watched, I think, two episodes, and I couldn't get into it. And um, then all of a sudden, episode three, it totally ca caught me. And now I'm addicted to Outlander. So that's what I'm watching. So thank you for the suggestion of me watching Outlander. <laughs> okay, guys. Love you all to pieces, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.